In 2050, our population will hit between 9 and 10 billion. That's a growth rate of about 83 million a year, which is a lot. And we need a way to sustainably and nutritiously feed those people. And bugs are a great option. Bug appetit. Mm, perfect. Welcome back to Cooking with Critters, my pretend cooking show where I make people more comfortable with eating bugs. <laughs> my name is Allie Moore and I eat bugs. And a lot of people think that's kind of weird, especially in Western cultures, but bugs are sustainable for the planet, super nutritious, and can taste great if you know what you're doing. Buggable is the brand I've created to promote edible insects, but my goal is to normalize bugs, take them from sensationalized or novelty fear factor food and introduce them as everyday ingredients. So where some people have a spice cabinet or spice drawer, I have my bug drawer filled with all of these different flavors that I can just play around with. And then I have the infamous bug cupboard where I will stock up all of my excess bugs from chips to pasta sauces to scorpion vodkas and more. Looks like here we have some beetles which kind of look like coffee beans, but they're not. So my goal for today is to show you that while you can eat full bugs and they're really delicious, there's also a ton of ways to weave them into everyday foods and products. Today, my friend Lisa's coming over, and before she gets here, I wanna prepare something new for her to try. I've realized that you have to put bugs into extreme comfort foods to make people like overly comfortable with trying this new, not so scary ingredient. But today we're cooking little grasshopper mini pizzas, and we're gonna make them super simple using these spiced grasshoppers from Merci Mercado instead of pepperoni or anything else you throw on there. So first, we're gonna just dress our little pizzas up by coating them with some marinara sauce. Next up, we're gonna put some cheese on because what's a pizza without cheese? A little bit of sauce and a lot of cheese. That's how I like it, if you please. It's my childhood theme song. So next up, I'm going to a couple thin slices of tomato on there and chives. So these pizzas may look cute, but they're lacking any protein. So now it's time for the not so pepperoni pepperoni or chapulines or grasshoppers. They are seasoned up with some spices so they have a lovely little tang to them and I'm gonna place them strategically all over. Now these are little mini critter pizzas and we've preheated our oven to 425 degrees. We're gonna put these in for five to ten minutes until they're nicely melted and then dive in. Very graceful. My friend Lisa, she has a great palette, so she'll be helping me for a couple buggable events that are coming up by taste testing some dishes and Welcome some bugs that bug I have some questions on. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Lisa is the most incredible friend in the world and has agreed to come over today to help me taste test a couple things. We're gonna start with the pizzas before they get cold. I want her to try the little black ant topped sushis to see how the flavor profiles match. And then we're just gonna mosey on through some of these other bugs and kind of describe their flavor profiles. As you can guess, these aren't super commonly eaten, but they are really good at grabbing attention. I'd like to make them more compatible with dishes. Your brain is going to help. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna try is the critter pizza and Lisa's gonna test it out. What do you think? There is like this slight like chili lime flavor that like nicely accentuates like the tomato sauce and the cheese in the bread. It also has a nice kick to it too. But yeah, I like this a lot. In a fact, repeat? I definitely eat this again. In <laughs> yes. fact, I want to finish this <laughs> Yay. So up next, what we've made are these uh, salmon, avocado, rice rolls topped with black ants to add a little bit of a citrus element. So I've not made this before and I'm excited to see what you think. This is really good. Um, the ants remind me of like tempura crunch. So it's 
it like adds that layer of texture, but at the same time it cuts through like the avocado and the salmon. I just want to finish off the rest of it. <laughs> So Lisa really knows her sushi, so I'm thrilled that she liked it. I'm very excited to see what the guests at the next event think too. And I have one more. At the events that I host, I always try to bring out some bonus bugs if people seem like they're ready for them. And the goal here is to get people to share what they learned today on social media, etc., without crossing that line to sensationalize them. So we're gonna start off with the June bugs, and you haven't had these ones before, uh, but I think the fun part for me is seeing people terrified of eating these June bugs. They expect this Lion King moment of like guts everywhere, but that's not the case at all. They're dried out, they are more nutty than anything else, and I really wanna hear your thoughts. June bugs can be anywhere from a little bit acidic to almost briny and salty. I like the crunch. Here, all right, it's it's like a salted pretzel type of flavor, but it has a mixture of like soy nuts. Huh, salted pretzel actually. Like that's, I have a journal that I keep where I like record down flavors and I'm like, I need to go get my journal. So by far, as you know, one of my favorite bugs to eat ever is a scorpion. It's like a little land lobster. They're both arthropods and it kind of has a lobstery taste. I think better uh, is a salmon jerky as a descriptor. This one's a little brinier, a little saltier than I've had before, but uh, they're super cool. These are saltier. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot less chewy than I thought it would be. It reminds me of, again, like a little bit like a shrimp or like the claw meat of a lobster, if that makes sense. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I think that in addition to being tasty, their coolness factor almost outweighs their like scary factor. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Last but not least is the giant water bug. Infamous for its jarring appearance. We're cautious because these are very fibrous, meaning you have to chew a lot, um, but they end up tasting just like a pumpkin seed. However, Cheers. because they look the way they do, they press a lot of people's buttons. <laughs> so. They're not bad though, right? They're actually delicious. <laughs> um, I was like, it reminds me of salted pistachios a little bit. Mm-hmm. That's actually a really good descriptor of pistachios. But totally different texture. Yeah, not totally the chewy nutty. Yeah. But it has like a mimicky flavor profile of a pistachio. The slight chew of like a pumpkin zine. So I'm not surprised, but still super glad that Lisa really liked the giant water bug. It is definitely the most challenging to bite into, but once you do and you realize, oh, it's so familiar, it's like a seed or like, you know, mushroomy, it's super easy. And those are really fun to cook with and present with. So now I have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of. Me and I have to borrow the bug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there's tons of reasons to be eating bugs right now. And my hope is that people allow their logic to guide them rather than their irrational fears. Really, instead of asking why we should eat bugs, we should be asking why shouldn't we eat bugs. Bugs are more environmentally friendly, ethical, nutritious, than a lot of traditional livestock options out there. And overseas, there's places that have been raised where you know maybe escargot is common, or maybe uh, your traditional soup dish has a silkworm pupa in it. Out here, however, we are taught that bugs are bearers of pestilence and disease, and they're the stars of like, Halloween movies with giant ants taking over the world. So of course we think that bugs are not only not edible, but terrifying. And I'm here to change that stigma and update people into a new way of thinking that's a little bit more sustainable and a lot more nutritious. I'm not under any crazy assumption that in the next five years we'll be walking down Vons and choosing between different uh, proteins for our dinner tonight, maybe frozen chicken, maybe frozen scallops, maybe frozen crickets. Like, we're not close to that yet. But I do know that as food scientists get more uh, into the space, as venture funding continues to create better insect farming and harvesting methods, I know that the future does contain bugs, and I know that it'll be a more sustainable and nutritious one. If this didn't bug you, please subscribe to The Wizard of Odd TV.